Hi, everybody. Welcome to part two of our Learning at Lunch Literacy Supports for Remote Learning series with Karen Janowski. There's Karen. Uh, I'm glad you're here with us today, uh, whether you're here live with us or watching it on the recording. Appreciate it. Uh, my name is Mike Morata. I'm the director of the Assistive Technology Advocacy Center, and Karen will advance my slide, and you can see all our contact information. There it is. Uh, so you can reach out to us in any way. Uh, if you have some ideas of webinars you might want to see in the future or just some other information about assistive technology, we are here. Uh, and we're excited to bring Karen to you today. And uh, I will turn my mic off so Karen can jump right in. So Karen, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you so much. Literacy at Lunch, so excited to be here with you today. So if you're interested, I'm Karen Janowski. I am the president of EdTech Solutions, and we are a, um, a private practice in the greater Boston area. We love what we do. We're all about inclusive technology to help every learner succeed. Um, if you're interested in following along with the slides on your own or, or saving them for later, I've added the bit.ly right here, bit.ly slash reading 41020, the date today. So feel free to, um, to just follow along and share this, this presentation with as many people as you would like. So it is case sensitive, bit.ly slash reading 41020. Everybody got that? And it, Mike, actually, if you even wanted to add it into the um, chat window, that would be great. I probably should have done it at the beginning. So we have 30 minutes, lots to cover. Um, so in the chat window, also, please post your questions, your comments, your ideas, your strategies, anything you would like to. We all learn from each other. And post what you do and where you're from as well. I'd be interested to know what you do and where you're from. So let's go. So anytime we think about the use of technology, it always starts with reflection. What are we currently doing? Is what we're doing reaching all of our learners? Um, do we need to rethink things? Just because we've covered it, does it mean that they've learned it? Or just because we've covered it in a way that works for us, does it mean that it works for our students? So questions to think about. Am I promoting a love for learning? Am I promoting, am I providing ongoing exposure to texts of interest? And am I providing ongoing access to grade level vocabulary? Those are some of the things, because when we change to, and we think about um, a student's level of independent reading, their fluency, their automaticity, their decoding, we are potentially limiting them from accessing grade level content and grade level vocabulary. And that is not something that we want to do. So one of the things that I always say, um, the things that I've actually heard students say, I never read any book. A sixth grade student said that to me back in um, December and I added it to my presentations because that breaks my heart when, when students have already learned that they will never read another book. And this next slide was actually said by my own son on his graduation day and back in 2008. He was said, I will never read another book. He's dyslexic. He was discouraged. Fortunately, he has read many books through audiobooks, through audio supports, through YouTube. He is reading all the time and also learning all the time. He's a strong visual learner. So he watches tutorials and teaches himself the, the most incredible things. So that's where I'm coming from. That's my frame of reference. Because learning can actually go in so many different directions. Our instructional methods can go in so many different directions. And so the thing to keep in mind with that sixth grade student and what my son said in high school, the perception of difficulty impedes progress. If our students think that something is hard, and if they're already struggling with reading, the assigning them, no matter what it is, if they have that perception of themselves, it does impede their progress. So we wanna break that cycle of, I can't do it, I can't, this is too hard for me, I'm giving up, and we wanna help promote success. And so these read aloud options, do promote success. 
And there's always that, um, that idea of, is it cheating? Absolutely not. If we are giving our students access to grade level content that they would need to depend on an adult for, there is no way that this is cheating and no way that this is a crutch. I have been in situations, I've been to IEP meetings and advocated strongly for a student to be able to have access to the read aloud tools. And I have had teachers say to me, yes, but we don't want them to become dependent on the technology. And I say to them, okay, but right now is he dependent on you? So they don't really seem to make that connection between dependent on technology versus dependent on an adult. What happens when that adult is no longer available? Let's promote success and independence so that every student can succeed. I am passionate about this because I don't want anyone graduating from high school hating reading, hating, saying that they will never read another book and just missing out on the delight of accessing and going into imaginary places as well as accessing nonfiction. So the Read Aloud supports, they at, at their most basic, their te there's text-to-speech where you can customize choices. You have the ability to customize the voice, the customize the rate of speed. And again, it isn't about us. It isn't about, oh, well, because I've also had teachers say, oh, I don't like that voice. Well, again, if that is the voice that the, that the student chooses, it's not about us. And the rate of speed, oh, that's too slow, or oh, that's too fast. Again, it's not about us. We have to help our students identify the rate of speed that works best for them. There's also human narration. And then when we think about these read aloud options, we wanna think, is there highlighting? Is it word by word? Is it dual color? meaning the, one, the, the word is highlighted in one color, the sentence is highlighted in another color. Is there sentence highlighting? Is there paragraph hiding? What does the hide, highlighting and look like? And we have come so far, going back to those text-to-speech voices, if anyone remembers Microsoft Mary or Microsoft Sam, I mean, those were horrible voices. We have come so far in the quality of computer generated voices that it's really absolutely incredible. So what I want to do now with this remaining time, the next 20 minutes, I want to explore with you a resource that I developed. It's a Padlet and we, it will take us there. We'll go to the Padlet and it actually, I'm already there. So let's close that one. So. Oh, that was just a picture. Sorry about that. Um, so e what you can do is, again, share this Padlet with your colleagues, with your families, with, with everyone. And here we go. So resources to teach reading skills, that was something that we addressed in part one. This, these next two um, columns are what we're going to look at today in um, part two of providing read aloud supports for our struggling learners. So there are a number of resources, high quality audiobooks for younger learners. Everyone seems to know about Storyline Online. There's 56 picture books, they're read by Screen Actors Guild members. Um, it is also available as an app and so but what I always recommend too is when you listen to a, a book using Storyline Online, always turn on closed captioning and that provides additional support because we cannot, uh, closed captioning is one of the best tools that is readily available and free that can help support our struggling learners. So here is, this one is something new that I learned about, Rivet. So if we click on Rivet, I love this tool. So it offers reading practice and you can down, it has a, an app. We can try it online. We can watch the video. Over 3,500 leveled books for kids where they can practice. They can hear the text read to them and they can also practice the text as well. It's really, it's, you know, engaging. It's kid friendly. 
Um, it's definitely something to explore if you are unfamiliar with this particular tool. There's reading support on every single page. So here it is, we can listen to it, and then we can also record our voices. So that's an, um, fairly new to me. I, maybe you're already familiar with it. Epic Books, a lot of schools are using that. The, it, it gives you free access to over 40,000 books um, for a, up to age 12. And it's free through the end of June. This is one of those companies that's allowing free access because of this unprecedented time of remote learning. So recommend to your students search for the read to me in the video stories. Another one, Circle Round, is a WBUR podcast. So this is a podcast so that students can listen to folk tales from around the world. And they keep adding new ones every week. They've got 90 already there. I want to take a minute just to, to, to um, talk about some research that I recently came across that because there's always um, the challenge of, is it real reading? What is the benefit of e-reading or online reading or audio reading versus actually holding the book in your hand and reading it with your through eye reading? There's eye reading, there's ear reading, and there's finger reading for Braille. And one of the research studies that I uh, that was cited pointed out that students, when they listen to audio books with with high quality human narration, or they listen to podcasts that are read well, that it allows a student's imagination to work more than it would when they were reading the books on their own, because then they're just focusing on imagining and picturing what is happening in the scene. When they are decoding the books themselves, then they really have to think about the words, the vocabulary, and all of that. So just keep, keep that in mind, that audiobooks really can help our students imagine. Um, United for Literacy, again, over 400 picture books and more than half of them are in Spanish. So all of these links here will take you to those websites themselves. Story Nori, this is an awesome website. Um, explore fairy tales, Greek myths, original stories. So again, the text is on the page to follow along and overlook. Yeah, the one thing about Story Nori is it does have a lot of ads. So you do want to overlook those. Um, kid Lit Read Aloud. Let me just take you here because this is kind of a fun thing. So other kids have volunteered to read books to, um, to, other, to kids. So there are a number of YouTube videos that, oh, I'm sorry, it's taking a while to download, but again, um, you can see the okay read aloud so here we can so we can read out loud this book and waiting for it to all load in just so you can get an idea of what it looks like hi i'm lisa Kleinensa. And I'll be reading Game Changers, the story of Venus and Serena Williams. So this particular one is read by an adult, but they, but you can see. And again, what I would recommend that you do, turn on Venus closed captioning. V and Mika, two peas in a pod, best friends. And I have Everybody customized, new, I'm going to, two sisters to be. I have customized my visual presentation of my closed captioning, which is easy to do by using this settings button. So that's just a, another option to think about, Kid Lit Read Aloud, Flip Along Storytime Books. Now again, these are audiobooks for younger learners. Storytime Space Read by Astronauts in Space. This is fun if you've got um, students who are really into space and into um, planets and things like that. So astronauts have actually read a number of books that students can listen to. And these decodable chapter books are available as well. And so those are some of the options for our younger students, their read alouds. Then um, I'm going to go over here, the high quality audio supports for older learners. And I'm going to mention that there are three very easy options to use 
that make everything text-to-speech and readable. Immersive Reader, I'm going to go a little bit more into that. Snap and Read, currently Snap and Read is offering, it's by a company called Don Johnston, is offering it free for the rest of the school year. And then Read and Write for Google, they have free parts of their text of their toolbar, which are free. And I'm, I think that most people do know about those options. Let me just go into the, um, is Rivet good for middle school age students? No, my sense is it's mostly elementary age. Thanks for reposting that link, Mike. Can you, oh, oh post the link for the first part one I'll, of the series. I'll find okay, it here. Mike, no I'll leave that up to you as well. I do want to show you some of these high quality audio spot supports for older learners because that's sometimes where things break down. So there's a tool called Story Shares, and this has been, these are original texts that are now, so um, you can look under all ages, late elementary, middle, high school, and post. So you can see it's really geared more towards the population that is often overlooked. And what's nice about it is they give you, if you uh, mouse over, it gives you a nice um, explanation about, just like on the back cover, what it's like. So, and it gives you the lexile level, things like that. So if I open up one of these books, and you can see some of them are rated um, here. We'll pull up, let's pull up this one, The Last Freedom. And we can buy it as a paperback, and, or we can just read it online. So I'm going to go to the, the chapter, and it looks like the actual book itself. And see this feature over here? Now we can listen with it. And I have to say, when I was trying it earlier today, um, I kept running into a glitch, um, a speech enabled by ReadSpeaker, and it kept saying that there was an issue for me. I hope that that isn't the case for you, because it does allow you to listen to the book read to you. But I do want you to know about that particular resource, Story Shares. Another one is Bookshare, which most people, again, most, special, most assistive technology and inclusive technology people know about. Those of us who are specialists or consultants or zealots or passionate, we know about these tools. But we need to make sure that our special educators and our general educators and our students and our families know about Bookshare, which is a digital text repository and it currently has over 850,000 books. How amazing is that? How many of you are currently using Bookshare? Oh, see, you had that problem, Shannon, yesterday? Yeah, I, maybe it's a glitch right now um, that we need to let story shares know about as well. Um, but if, if, is anyone new to Bookshare? Because I will spend a lot of time on Bookshare. Um, if you're new, just let me know in the chat window. But one of the things people always ask, um, who qualifies? Okay, well, good. So those of you, some of you are using it. Who qualifies? Anyone with a print disability, whether it's um, due to uh, dyslexia, reading disability, whether it's due to a physical disability, they're unable to hold the book in a traditional manner, turn the pages, whether it's due to a line, low vision or blindness issue and they can't access um, paper text, they all qualify for access to Bookshare, which then allows them to um, use a text-to-speech program to listen to these books. So um, I did, oh, I did have, oh I, I, oh, I took Learning Ally out, I'm sorry. I will add Learning Ally back in there because that is a tool that people do need to know about. The best apps to me for accessing digital text and using, combining it with Bookshare, History Reader and Capti. So those are some things to look into as well. Couple things that I do want to make sure that you know about. 60 second recap. So some of our students, getting them to read is a challenge. So, or getting them to read with fluency so that, that it limits their comprehension. If they're struggling with decoding and struggling with fluency and struggling with automaticity, how much are they really understanding about their text? Are they really comprehending it? So they may be reading it, but not understanding it. So I want to show you two resources that can help with that. So the 60 second recap. So look at all these books that it does um, give you 60 second recap videos. 
these two in a very often read um, a commonly read book is to kill a mockingbird i think every student has to graduate from school middle school or high school reading this book so just so you can see these particular recaps they show whoops sorry let's try that one again to kill a mockingbird oh all right well let's just go with the adventures of huckleberry Finn. so i want you to see that there are recaps and they are also um divided so here's an introduction here's an overview so they show you different the plot the characters how valuable is this so so again when i think back to my own son when he would he he always had the assigned reading and some assigned summer reading and he would always read the books but he never quite understood the characters because the names would be confusing to him and he would pretty much only look at the first letters of the names and then when it came time to assess whether he actually read it or not he didn't do well because he didn't couldn't dif differentiate between the characters so using something like this can really help our students who struggle um, with decoding names the next option is even more helpful because it's called lit charts and i hope people are using this option and this is especially great for middle school and high school and what it is it's again they keep adding more literature guides they offer 12 1282 literature guides and i bet if you look again next week there will be even more and i've even requested some things can't find what you need request it i had requested a few years ago the book holes uh, which is a fifth grade commonly read in fifth grade and I think a month later it was added into the library. So feel free to add um, add requests. So they have a number of different op, um, literature guides, and it looks like see this thing is. I'm going to actually look for. Let's look up um, Catcher in the Rye. And when I search for Catcher in the Rye, just want to show you a little trick, because I've had teachers tell me, oh, they're you know like oh no, it's all grayed out. I can't access it. This part is grayed out. Here's the literature guide right here. So I'm gonna click on the literature guide to the catcher in the rye. And what I want you to see is, has an introduction, it has a plot summary, it has detailed summary and analysis. It looks at themes, it looks at quotes, themes. You know, again, I would have loved to have had a tool like this when I was reading The Great Gatsby. What were the themes? I didn't get it. It looks at characters. So I wanna show you this. So if we look at the all characters, again, for our students who can't remember or can't differentiate between all the characters. So look at this. It, it has a summary of the main characters. And even if you scroll down, it even goes into the minor characters to help students find that information and differentiate. So that's another option to know about. The other thing that I want you to know about too is I mentioned immersive reader. So, and I also over here mentioned additional resources, helper bird and immersive reader, which is in the Microsoft Edge browser. What I wanna do is I'm gonna open up Catcher in the Rye and I'm going to open up Holden Caulfield, um, read full character analysis, here it is. And I'm going to open up a Chrome extension called Helper, Helper Bird, which is right here. Again, something that everyone needs to know about. Go ahead, open up. Oh, don't you love it when it doesn't work for you? Okay. All right, I'm model failure. Um, let's try, okay, not sure why it's not, not working. Hmm. All right, it's, it's an amazing app because it offers, well, I'll show you in Microsoft um, Edge. Right now, what I'm going to do is I downloaded a new um, browser. If we go back into this, Microsoft Edge, add this browser, Immersive Reader is built in. So if you are unfamiliar with um, 
what Microsoft is doing, it's really quite impressive. And if it, everybody seems to know about read and write for Google, but I can't let you leave this uh, workshop today, this little webinar, without knowing about um, immersive reader. So I went on yesterday and here we'll we'll do an update. We'll do a boston.com and I'm from New England if you can. I'm from the Boston area if you can't tell because I haven't said park the car in Hobbit Yard. But anyway, so let's open up an article. Um, let's open up as expert forecast how coronavirus will affect the housing market. Let's just say we want to read that particular article. So one of the things, we notice that there's a lot of clutter on this page. So what I want to do in Microsoft Edge, this, this, um, this little icon right here, I'm going to click on it, and it is my immersive reader icon. And what it does is it immediately gets rid of all the visual clutter. It, I've customized it with this kind of background. And now I can use the read aloud features. Now I can listen to it. So here's, I can listen to this article read to me. Experts forecast how the coronavirus may affect the housing market long term. So I'm going to pause it. So here you'll see there are some voice options and there are, I did slow it down as well. This is the normal rate. We have um, Microsoft Jesse and Microsoft Guy are the two English voices. There are a number, if you like Australian accents or whatever, there are a number of different voices that you can use. So I like the Jesse voice, it works for me. The other thing, we can adjust the rate of speed. I do want you to see, besides the voice option, we also have text preferences. So I know that there are Chrome extensions that you can get to customize, but this is all built in to the web browser. How amazing is that? Oh, download the mic. So the question is, how much does it cost? Do you have to download? If so, what does it cost? It's just another browser like the Chrome browser. It's just another browser. It's completely free. So here we can adjust the, um, the presentation, we can adjust the text size, we can adjust the text spacing, and then it also has grammar tools. Immersive Reader offers all these things. So let's say you want to syllabicate the, um, the article that you're, that you're having your students read, we can also um, point out, here I'm going to turn off syllabication because it's a little confusing, and then here we can Highlight all of the nouns in a particular color. We can also show the labels. And so that's a noun. We can also color code the verbs. So again, these are tools. This is a whole program called Immersive Reader that's um, built into the Microsoft Edge browser completely free. It's a reason to start switching from the Chrome browser to the web browser or showing our students how to use that. So I did just want to make sure that you do understand that particular tool. And we only have a couple minutes, so I do want to leave time for questions. Any questions? I know that that is when you um, when you have literacy at lunch, you have a chance to really speed through some of the options. And I hope some of these were new for you, especially the Microsoft Edge browser, because those. Microsoft keeps adding new features and it wasn't so readily available even last year. Um, the immersive reader tools, they used to be much more complicated to use. Everything is much easier. Story share, lit charts, all of those options. So I showed you a variety of tools that are kindergarten to beyond high school, post-grad. Has anyone added this option to Seesaw? Um, which option do you mean? You mean using Microsoft Edge within Seesaw? Is that what you mean, Erin? I'm not sure I understand the question. Anyone, anyone else have any questions? If not, we ended right on time. And I really thank you for joining us today. 
Um, great to have you here, and I hope you learned at least one new thing that you can apply. Thanks, Karen. This stuff was awesome. I see some questions coming in now. Yeah. Would you suggest the Microsoft Edge is easier to use than the Google extension? Because when it's I I am discovering that yes, it is because you might add Beeline Reader, you might use yeah. um, text help with the focus line. This is all built in, and you can set it up once, and it saves every time you open up your Edge browser. It's really quite fantastic. Yeah, I, so, I agree. The, the fact that it's built in, when it, whenever anything's built in, it tends to work a little easier. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, Aaron, that's always the trick. Think about, so go back to your reflection. What are you currently doing? Is it reaching all of your learners? And if it isn't, then we don't we have an ethical responsibility to ensure that our students do have access to the tools that do allow them to be successful and independent. So Erin, I'm gonna drop my email address. It was also on my slide. Um, anybody can feel free to email me. Uh, any questions, because we can always do a Zoom meeting or FaceTime or Skype or whatever. And Mike, we also, yep. um, I do wanna show, oh, Mike has a question if you, if you have any other webinar topics. The other thing too is, Join our AT chat conversation every Wednesday night. Mike and I host it, and we hope you can join us. Yes, for sure. Awesome. So Karen, thank you all. Always. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Mike. See you later. See you Have later. a great weekend. Thanks, you too.